Hello to a quick video on bytes of CC and today we are going to know about dilated convolution. And before we know what is it, let's look, look at some of the important applications of dilated convolution. So one is WaveNet that generates audio signals from male spectrograms. Now this is developed by DeepMind where uh, dilated convolution is used to capture long range temporal dependency. Uh, and uh, then it is also used to build models like deep lag for image segmentation where image segmentation means we just partition an image into multiple parts for capturing multi-scale context without resolution now let us know what dilated convolution is so dilated convolution is that which introduces gaps between the filter elements allowing the network to have a larger receptive field without increasing the number of parameters this makes them particularly useful in tasks that requires multi-scale context and long range dependency such as uh, audio generation and image segmentation like we just talked about this now right so what happens here is a filter is applied to an input with certain gaps where the rate of dilation is equivalent to the number of elements skipped between the filter elements now this does not make quite much sense right so let us take an example to understand dilated convolution now when the dilation uh, factor or dilation rate is one it is equivalent to a normal convolution so uh, suppose we have an image vector which this is the image vector with pixels a b c d e f and we have this is the kernel and now what happens is it will be like a sliding window of three will slide over the image so the first window being abc next window will be bcd and that will produce this output the third window is cde this gives you the output cx plus dy plus ez and this is the final uh, window that is def producing this output now this we have already talked about in the pooling lecture that is uh, the part two of the convolution neural network and um, so this is the output so this is exactly like the convolution window when it slides upon so this is like the convolution layer with uh, convolution neural operation with a stride of one now let's move on to the dilation factor of two so here you will need to forget about sliding window operation because here first x will be multiplied with a now the next element chosen to be multiplied with y will be second element from a that is c the next element chosen to be multiplied with z will be the second element from c that is e and you get the first element of the output vector as ax plus cy plus ez now this is the first element now we are moving on to the next element of the output vector so here the element to be chosen is just the next element to a that is b so b gets multiplied with x now the next element to be chosen is the second element from b that is d and the third element chosen will be second element from d that is f so the output becomes bx plus dy plus fz now ideally the next element uh, the next output element would start from c but the problem is the next element to be chosen would have been e and the next element to be multiplied by z falls here like you can't operate f with z so it will be ideally the element next to f which is not present so this is going to be the final output of the dilution factor uh, two. Now, if you must, like if you can't do without sliding window, so this is going to be a hack. Now, what happens here is we are actually skipping element. So, this was the first window, like not the window, sorry. The first elements chosen were A, C, and E. This, this, 
and this. So here the number of elements kept in between was dilation factor minus 2 that is 2 minus 1 which is going to be equals to 1. So you can do something like this. This suppose this is your window. So there are three elements. So this is going to be A, B, C, D, and E. So this is going to be your x. And now put this value as 0. This is going to be your y. Put this value as 0. And this is going to be your z. Now you can apply this particular kernel as your convolution kernel. So that is this operation. If you operate this kernel over this vector, this is going to give you an output of ax plus cy plus ez because anything multiplied with 0, like b is supposed to be multiplied with 0, so 0 into b is going to be 0, and then c into 0 is going to be 0, right? Sorry, not c, d into 0 is going to be 0. So, this uh, like you can think of a convolution window like this. Now you will have to add this cells with value 0 and the number of cells between two operating elements in your kernel will be equivalent to the dilation factor say k minus 1. So this contains one cell in between. So now let's move on to where the dilation factor is 3. Now you are going to do this along with me. So the first element chosen will be A. I'm not using that uh, window kind of thing. I'm just doing it the way it is supposed to be like. So the first element chosen is A. Now what is going to be the second element chosen? So this is the first element that gives you AX. This is to be added to how many elements are to be skipped? That is 3 minus 1, that is 2. So you have to skip B, you have to skip uh, C, and now the next element chosen will be D. Next, you have to skip E, you have to skip F, and the third factor would be G, Z. And this is going to be your ultimate because you can't just move this because if you move this, you need to have another pixel over here. Another here or here. Anyways, so this is the only output for a dilation factor 3 on this image vector. So as you can see, the difference between a convolution operation, the normal convolution operation and dilation is, see, in normal convolution operation, what was happening was, the relationship between adjacent pixels were found out. So a window could would have been in, in case of normal convolution or with uh, dilation factor 1, whatever you like to call it. Uh, we would have found out the relationship or the interaction between A, B and C, just the adjacent ones. But in this case, we are not finding out the immediate you know, we are not interacting with the immediate uh, adjacent cells. Instead, we are skipping elements in between. And this helps to capture the long range dependencies in your data. So, this is uh, the difference between a dilated convolution and a normal convolution layer. Now, uh, let's look at the benefits of dilated convolution layer. So, uh, so, dilated convolutions, as we have said, it allows the network to have a larger receptive field without increasing the number of parameters. So, this is uh, one of the biggest advantages of dilated convolution. Next, we have we can skip input values like dilated convolution, convolution can capture multi scale information efficiently, making them useful for models where capturing long range dependencies is crucial and it also provides a way to control the receptive field size dynamically by adjusting the dilation rate so that is 
all about the benefits of dilated convolution so that was all for today i hope uh, things got a little clearer because you will be coming across uh, these kind of uh, dilated convolution when we when you are dealing with uh, larger neural network pre-trained neural network so that's why i thought that i would uh, make a video on this so that's all for today thank you for watching